So, Kagi, welcome to Audible Sessions. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Very happy to be here. So you've got a brand new book. It's called Saturn Returns. It's based on your podcast of the same name. So I wondered when you first got interested in the spirituality side of things. Well, I would say I've always been a spiritual person, but I guess in my early 20s, it, it wasn't very popular. And then it was when I was 27 and I moved to LA that I kind of went through this big or started going through this big transition. I met some people when I was there and sort of got into, you know, going to full moon ceremonies and stuff like that, sort of dipping my toe into stuff that, that space. Stuff that sounds quite LA. Very LA. <laughs> but I guess it resonated with yeah. me and something that was quite innate in me. Mm. And then that kind of ignited a curiosity about that whole area. And it was really when I went through my Saturn return that I was like, okay, I, I want people to know about this. Mm. So explain what the Saturn return period sure. is. Sure. Well, so your Saturn return is something that happens in your late 20s. As Saturn returns to the same place in the sky, it was when you were born. And so in astrology, this is known as this cosmic coming of age when you initiate into adulthood. And its reputation isn't necessarily a good one because if you look up anything about Saturn return it's a bit doom and gloom and everything in your life is going to turn upside down and whilst that might be true what my my aim of the book is to give people a different perspective on Saturn to actually recognize that the things that fall apart in your life or the things that do get turned upside down are a necessary process for you to come out the other side a more authentic and truthful version of who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So how was it for you what was that period of your life like? <sighs> Um, turbulent. You know, I think through our 20s, we're sort of sold this idea that by 30, everything files itself into some sort of meaning and place, and that we're going to have it all figured out. And then you get to that point, and actually, you don't have it all figured out. And there's a lot of pressure, societal pressure, internalized pressure of, you know, having to be a certain way of achieving certain things and we compare ourselves to our peers and at that point everyone starts going in different directions at different speeds so for me I felt this pressure of time like things weren't really going the way I thought they would but I felt very alone in mm. that experience I I felt like everyone else was figuring it out I say in the book it's like it was like everyone was sent the handbook of life and mine was lost <laughs> in the in the post so the book is kind of like I don't know, hopefully helping people with that. And you were obviously really kind of heavily pursuing music. So, and that that had been your dream for so long. So to that kind of my dream, yeah. let that go, what what did that feel like? Did did that feel like, oh, this is right, this is a release? Did did you have to battle the feeling like, oh, I've, I've actually failed at this? What, what were you feeling then? Music is very true for me, mm. but not in the way that I was pursuing it. Right. And by that, I mean, I think by nature, I'm a writer and I like expressing myself through different mediums, whether that's songwriting, poetry, books. I love doing the podcast and having that long form way of having these conversations. But music in its sort of entirety as, I guess, pursuing being a pop star just never really truly resonated for me right. because I also battled with a lot of self-doubt, a lot of um, performance anxiety to the point where it was actually too painful to try, do you know what I mean? To yeah. kind of counteract that. But I've been pursuing it for so long that I felt all this pressure. And I felt like it was coming from outside of me, but it actually was just me telling myself that I had to do this. And I speak about it a lot in the book about the sort of need for external validation, like mm. why are you chasing certain things? And there was one moment where, it was after this breakup I had, I went to see a healer. And I went to see the healer because of the breakup but it ended up being nothing to do with that. And she started asking me about my career. And she asked me what I was doing. And I said, I'm, you know, I'm a singer, I'm pursuing music. And she was sort of reading my body at the time. And she said, she said, it's not resonating in your body. And it was just such a direct thing that she said, but it kind of, my body agreed, like I agree, agreed with her when she said that. I was like, I know, mm. but I guess I'd not acknowledged it myself. Or I'd had, you know, I told people that that's what I was doing and I didn't want to express any doubt in that. Right. Because I was becoming so tunnel vision on like that one thing being the be all or end all of like, you know, if that didn't succeed, then I was a failure. And 
it was really quite a pivotal moment mm. because she allowed me to take, yeah, to take that pressure off. Mm. And then from there, kind of everything started falling into place. Mm. You also talk about authority and sort of finding authority from yeah. within rather than looking for it it's hard. elsewhere. Any tips? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, a lot of the stuff I write in the book is stuff that I'm I'm still constantly learning. I've sort of rejected authority and that kind of feeling like someone's controlling me in that sense. Mm. But equally, it was very hard to recognize and realize that actually I could be the authority of, of my mm. own life. Because within that, there comes a lot of fear. It's kind of that thing, we talk a lot about fear of failure, but we don't talk about the fear of success. And I think those two mm. are quite intertwined. Like when you fully step into your own authority, you know that you are responsible for everything that happens to you, the good and the bad. And right. there's a safety in playing the victim. Mm. And you talk about um, relinquishing control and balancing that with taking responsibility. So how do those two things go together? I know, it's, it sounds like a sort of paradox and in a way it is because when you are in that sort of victimhood mentality, often you are trying to control everything because you feel like you're a victim of your life, your circumstance. So the relinquishing control is about acknowledging that actually everything is happening for you, not against you. So when things happen in your life, say something bad happens, like rather than going, oh, everything is going to go wrong. You know, this is my life and this is like the role I play in it. Instead, you're like, this is happening for me. I might not know how or why, but I trust that it is. And I think we can all reflect at things that happen in our lives and see that something that was seemingly awful or heartbreaking actually led us to something so much greater. We just didn't know it at the time. We like to think that life is this sort of linear A to B and this is my goal and I'll just walk and I'll get there and everything will be everything will be lovely and perfect. But it doesn't work like that, you know, and we need to be, I always think of like Saturn as a wrecking ball that kind of throws us off track, puts us on a detour, but it, it does so, so we can gain the wisdom and experience and just make us a more sort of refined person because it's actually the, the pain and those, those experiences that craft us into the people we're supposed to become. Mm. And do you think that part of... Um Saturn Returns uh, and you making the podcast out of it and also just acknowledging that period of your life. Is that about kind of um, connection and acknowledging that other people are going through the same thing? Is that for you maybe the most important reason of acknowledging that period of your life or do you think there's more to it than that? I think, well, that's the sort of tagline of the show is you aren't alone or you're not alone. And I think that's because I probably felt quite lonely during that time. And, you know, by being able to connect with the community that I built from Saturn Returns, like, I in turn feel seen and heard, and mm. they do too. And that's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, on that note, thank you, Kagi, so much. So great to chat. Thank you so much for having me.